Kawira Mwangaza is a drama queen. So w whenever you see this post, the letters in, it's part of a script. It's like keeping up with the Kardashians on each channel in Hollywood. Here we are keeping up with Kawira and Moraga. Umeru imewajia baka kwa damu, sasa wanaona mwanamke hezi tuongoza. Wabana tunasama ni mama, na tunamunga mkono, mia kwa mia, sako kwa bako, vampa tu vampa, kwa wera kwa we? Kwa wera. Sirekali ya Kawera inapiganwa na matajiri yao walikuwa kichukua makontrakt. Na ndiyo manaitu wa makatel. Sasa mama akiwa kiongozi, mume wake akionekana pale inakuwa ni jambogeni. We don't have an, an, a problem with the husband being next to her, holding her hand, carrying her handbag. We have a problem when he starts influencing public policy by the mere fact that he's a husband. Tuko family from all over the world, wherever you're watching us. My name is Kingori Wangeshi. How are you doing? You know where political tea cups are being served, Tuko will definitely be there. We are in America. We are here to understand the intrigues that are making the frosty relationship between the governor and other elected leaders. Tuwaskize, wananchi, pamoja na viongozi wao. Njonami. Thank you very much for your time, uh, Honorable MCA. Uh, for purposes of identification and the people that you represent, kindly introduce yourself to our audience. Yeah, thank you. My name is Kiogora, Dennis Kiogora, DMK. Um, I'm the MCA for Abogeta West. This is my second term. Uh, I was elected on a, a DEP or the popularly known as BAS party ticket, and um, I'm also the minority whip in the County Assembly of Meru. Uh, I'm, I'm also a standing member of a committee of budget, uh, a committee on youth, committee on lands, committee on trade, and also standing committee on um, uh, on uh, education. All right, thank you. Those are very many portfolios in one person. Uh, now, they say that things don't go wrong; things start wrong. Has Meru County started on the wrong footing, Mwishimio? The county has started on a very bad footing uh, for me. I was not psychologically prepared to start with a war, having come from a war. Uh, the election was not very easy for me, and I believe for many other people who are buying this election. Uh, particularly because, like in my ward, there was, um, the, my opponent was very funded by UDA, which was a popular party in this area, and our party was in Azimio. So, you know, sending off the Azimio tag, uh, tag was expensive and difficult, even for most of us. We, we had run away from from it, uh, and um, then we, we thought now we can relax and maybe uh, re-energize and start working. So, but then things started happening around, and um, everything was running quickly down the drain. And I believe we have started a very wrong footing in the county of Meru. I don't know what miracle will happen so that. We get back. Um, we get back in line. I don't know uh, because uh, we started very well. We uh, after the swearing in of the governor, we had some. I think some meetings with with her. That some other meetings were held in Mombasa without much commitment, and then now um, things happened quickly bad when the governor stopped picking phone calls when was, when she was supposed to come to the assembly from the majority leader the minority leader the speaker himself now everybody was alarmed why is the governor not picking anybody's calls and they wanted to compare notes with her and maybe to have a sitting with the members of the county assembly before she comes to address us to address some issues uh, she had refused to address when we were in mombasa so we wanted to fix our meeting because we had said before anything happens we need to have a meeting with the governor. So I think things went south very fast because of communication. Mm -hmm. Breakdown of communication has broken everything down. And it has led to so many other things that happened after that, that now um, I don't know whether we are likely to go back to factory settings to start afresh. I don't know. The idea here is, or the truth is, that is my governor and all that is my MCA. So if they are not acting for my best interests, according to the article, 
123 of the county uh, government act then me as a as a citizen i have the right to uh, ask the president to dissolve uh, or to suspend the county so that I, I get another opportunity to look for someone who can be able to do what i want or to, who can be able to act to i mean for my best interests so basically that was the the thing that made us think okay since someone has got to do it uh, why not me you know or why not us <laughs> so uh, we've started the process and uh, very soon we'll be starting to collect the signatures and we are positive if they don't agree at some point then for sure Monainchi will have his way because it is a petition by the people uh, for the people and basically it is showing the, uh, the elected leader Zeus boss and the boss is talking right now so we elected you <laughs> we gave you that mandate you're not working so the boss says you come back home we will employ other people you have been an open critic of the governor even online including the meeting that she had called for reconciliation you yourself uh, commented on her post that you don't see why elected mcas or elected leaders would go to a governor's residence boardroom to solve uh, county issues but i thought a, a governor's residence is a public place like you know it's owned by the public because it's the residence of the governor the residence of governor is reserved for ceremonies for people to go make merry and for such events even when you look at status and for very official meetings where people are not worrying here you are calling for a peace meeting then you want to call us in your house look at countries that are worrying for example ethiopia the Prime Minister is at war with Tigri. And yesterday I saw there in a meeting where the Tigrian Defence Forces decided to rain down their weapons. They met at the AU headquarters in Addis. You have to always meet in a neutral ground wherever you are in a war or in a, you, are, you have differences between the parties. There is no way we could have gone to a residence when you are, when you are in a field, when you are feuding with someone, you can to have a meeting in their house. She can even have you killed there. So why, why would we go to a strong, to our territories? We ought to, she ought to have consulted with us about availability and then have a meeting in a neutral ground. The MPs, the, we also operate on diaries. Like I can tell you, it's only that it was you actually who called me Kingori. Otherwise I could not even have been available for this interview today. Like I have everything planned out. You, when you look at your data, diary and look at the plans that you have and everything, then you can be able to see and react. We had a meeting on Friday last week under the governorship, under the chairmanship of Governor Waiguru, who is the chairman of COG, and four other governors. So we, we agreed to, it's okay, we can have a dialogue. But she requested in this dialogue, it has to be only MCAs. She doesn't want MPs there. Then all of a sudden she comes and posts on Facebook. Oh, I have a meeting and I'm calling you MPs and MCAs. She ought to have used the right channels, first of all, to write the letter to us and everything before going to the public. She first of all told the public she has called us before we knew we have been called. It's utter disrespect. It's like she was summoning her employees. We are not our employees. We are not our appointees. We are appointees of the public. Those who are just theatrics. And there is something Governor Kiraito said, our predecessor, that Ga Kawira Mongaza is a drama queen. So w whenever you see this post, the letters in, it's part of a script. It's like keeping up with the Kardashians on each channel in Hollywood. Here we are keeping up with Kawira and Morega. So it's, it's just another episode in a long series that you, we are watching each and every day and getting videos. Then you tune in to their channels and, and TVs to see uh, what they are saying and what they are doing. So for them, it's just drama. It's nothing serious. But being the governor of Mary is a job that is up, supposed to be taken with a serious, um, to be taken seriously. She ought to engage everyone to keep everyone on board. She also needs to understand that trying to incite members of the public against us, like she is doing daily. Like for her, it's drama. It's competition. Oh, they approved three CECs. My God, I appointed, I, 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 I reduced the ministries to six, and now I have a functioning government. They tried to enter me from the front. They realized, uh, I, they, they, then they realized they can't do it. I don't know from behind and from, she's uttered something very vulgar about it. That it's, it's, a, it's a mind game. It's a, 
it's drama. It's, it's just a play. It's nothing serious. She is here just playing cat and mouse about ego, about who is more powerful, who can do this. I am more powerful. I work alone. I cannot be questioned. And you know, she's a bishop. Now, she, her meetings, she starts with prayers and ends with prayers. And there's nothing, like Karl Marx said, that religion is the opium of masses. People are drunk, and whenever you start by preaching to them, and they fear you, you are second, you are assistant Jesus. So people are not supposed to question you. So that's the kind of image she has put. But all of us know she is a thug. She is a common thug. Mashimiwa, did you just refer to your governor as such? Yes, I did, on record. And why? This is someone who misappropriated GAF funds and built a, I think, six-story building somewhere here in Makutano. If you tell her to explain where she got the money to build the six-story uh, building, she cannot tell you. She built, she went to somewhere in Meru, uh, Mer, uh, somewhere I think in Tigania West and built a rescue center that nothing stays there apart from maybe mosquitoes and rats. And then she spent a lot of money there siphoning and building uh, uh, her own house. Then she can only trust her family, the husband, the sisters, the, 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 the nephews, the, the cousins, they are the ones who she is employing. Who does that? that, that you can't trust anybody to guard you. You must, then you must be afraid, you must be a thug. If you are so much afraid that you can only trust your sister being your bodyguard, have you stolen from anybody? I don't even own a gun. I can walk freely in Meru town. I don't need to be protected, to be guarded by anybody. I trust that systems are working and I'm secure. For her, she has to hire relatives to feel safe. Who does that? Unless you are cartel in the drug, because she's, she's, a, she's, no, she's calling everybody cartel, cartel, cartel. So unless you are cartel yourself, or doing illegal stuff. So, but we expect that she is preparing. We, we, we have heard from uh, Gata Press that she is just laying the ground to steal public funds by blinding everybody as if the public trust her that this is our savior. Then she is busy, she will be busy now stealing from them. So, for her, it's a, it's a long con. It's like a, some, it's a script that she has, she, she has that is well planned on how she will steal by branding everybody else cartel, thieves, I'm the only one, I'm the only good one, and I will work alone, I'll procure alone. She has enlisted more than 20 companies already in the county procurement. The reason why she's actually fighting with them is about one fund. It's all about who will say which contractors to do the job. Now, we don't have a problem. The issue is she has her own contractor. She wants to do everything in Meru County by branding everybody else as a thief. I'm the only one who can be trusted. In Meru, kuna makateli zaidi ya Nairobi. Ama zaidi ya Mombasa, awa makatendi wanye kupigana. Wanataka meru hii, iwe ni sauti yao inatajikana. Si sauti ya mtu mwingine. Awa wate wenye wa, kwa genest mama, ni wezi, wanataka kuiba pesa ya wa meru. Na yo mama, ana hiyo time ya watu waibe pesa, ali promise. Tena huyo ni mtu wameokoka ni bishop wana, wanataka kumuangusha. Waangushe pasta mzima. She doesn't realize that GAF was not, was not well structured. She had the powers to do what she wants. Here things are guided by law. Everything, appointing a CEO, appointing even your cook, is guided by law here as the governor of Meru County. It's not, you don't do things at your whim the way they used to do at GAF. And I think she, she has the same mentality of GAF and she has come and continued with the same. Runstein declarations. The other day she was hiring people by the roadside in Timau as firefighters. Munataka uyu? No, wewe umekataliwa. Munataka uyu? As if she is the public service board. Basari, she wants to, di to, to, to disburse basaris by declaration. Tupatia uyu? Kama mtu wako pale ya kupendi ni andu yao, anasema apana, umekataliwa wewe kakando. Anapea checks watu. E, tupatia uyu? Eh, acclamation, looking for votes. This money is guided by procedures. And again, you are not allowed to go and issue checks in Laris for county government the way you used to issue GAF checks. These ones, a check will be taken to a school accountant who says I have deposited this money in this school's account and everything and that is, the turn slip is down and taken to the control of budget that the money that was received was taken to school. That when you come and give a check at a rally, if that check gets get lost, who acknowledges which school is in a rally to so that the schools can receive? Again, in one word, a thousand students or say 500 students get bursaries. In one one five hundred, don't tell me in that area you are going to give five hundred people money in the entire ward. You are going to touch every corner, and then you are going to vote forty-five wards. 
you alone, then you want us to stand by and watch you work. You're not going to do that. Na MCA wakua rate kushika mama mkono. Kama sivyo, mine nilikuwa hata naomba mama avunje hiyo bunge, turudi kwa kura tena. Tuwato MCA wote nyumbana, turudishe mama, tumutafutia wanyo wako, wako wako rate kufanya kazi na ee. Na kama walifanya makoso huko wa ombe msamaa, na hiyo story isa wafanya kazi. Na kama sivyo, tunarudi ya Rexon. Na tayanda nyumbana. Uvile amesame wakivunje bunge, tutawatoa wote, turudishe munya hapo. Uyo mwenye anasema ni rafiki yake ndiyo tunda tutaeka hapo sasa. Na wanataka kumungisi hiyo kwa simu ya kolakson. Na yo mama ataki hiyo mambo. Wanaona kwa hii miasi mbili tatu. Mama hamefanyia wa meru kasi sana. Hame sunguka kila pari. Hame jua sinda ya mumeru. Naenda kama sinani. Kwa hile mtu waka wenda kapisa. Itabidi tu wa Rudy Gini. Kama sivo tu Rudy Erekson. Chumariana na tupereka kukimbia masinani huko kufanya kasi peke yake. Na huko masinani ni... Ni MCA wanastahi kuyanda huko. Sasa ukimuambia hivi na hivi, ataki kusikia. Ya anachua, ya pado, anachiona kama ni, ni women rep wama ni kitambo hila alikuwa anayanda masinani. This is not a, it's not GAF, it's not whatever she was doing at GAF. This one requires you to be a serious CEO who can handle matters, who can handle people, and who can do a politics well. Mshimua, you are using very strong terms to define uh, your perspective or your perception of the governor. But that takes me to the county assembly. What is the composition of the county assembly? Because we know the governor was elected as an independent candidate. So how independent is the county assembly in representation, oversight and legislation? And in connection with that, do we have external forces that are, that are working with the county assembly perhaps to antagonize the governor or something like that? Um, for her, she, she is hiding behind the veil of, I am a woman. That's why they are fighting me. Wake up, Madam Governor. There are six other women who are governors and you are not hearing a sound in their counties. You are not even hearing their husbands. You actually don't even know who their husbands are. Right here, Embu County, Kirinyaga County, we don't know even their husbands. Um, of, of those governors. Susan Kika has been a powerful woman around and she is working very well with MCAs. Actually, when, when we were in that meeting on Friday, when we mentioned that one of the disputes is ward fund, Cecil Mbaria was like, you mean you have not given your MCAs ward fund and we have given ours? Like, for them, they are, they are way ahead. That's why education is important. And I've always repeated that you can, you can forge papers, but you can never forge brains. They will always follow you. They always exhibit themselves, the kind of a person you are, the kind of maybe if you are educated, if, if you are a problem solver, that will always be seen. And our county assembly is very independent. And let me tell you something, Kingori. If Kiraito, for example, because she assumes that it's Kiraito who is fighting her, Kiraito has to start interfering. Many members there don't like Kiraito, going by the fact that some were in PNU, Munya's camp. Others are in UDA, they were supporting Mithika. Others have been critics of Kiraito. I know them very well. So if it was, this was supposed to be seen, if it's seen that Kiraito is benefiting from it, I tell you, we will not be united like we are united. This is about us. This is about our survival. If anyone trying to interfere here, we could have gotten divided. It's only that we are united on a common purpose. We either perish together or survive together. Because this governor wants to work alone, she wants to win re-election alone, all of us are damned. So that is how it is. And she doesn't care that we are manifestos, we have people's expectations. She is going all the way to even decide how the bursaries will be distributed. And she says she is the one to identify the people who will benefit from bursaries. That's petty. So the opponents are not behind this, number one. Number two, she was independent. She, can even, she could even have called the independent MCAs, the five of them, and told them, look, I was elected as, like you just as independent and everything. Can you please support me? Even the independent guys are not supporting. So you can't just say it's because of the parties. Of course, UDA and BAS are the controlling parties in the assembly. But you can't just say that it's because I don't have a party. Why don't you even see support from the independent MCAs? They are the forefront of wanting you to go away. Mm -hmm. What problem do you have with her husband? Uh, being next to her. We don't have an, an, a problem with the husband being next to her. Even kissing her in public. 
holding her hand, carrying her handbag. They can do whatever they want to do, even in public, we don't care. We have a problem when he starts influencing public policy by the mere fact that he's a husband, when he starts disrespecting MCAs. The other day, the minority leader went to, to the office of the governor to see the governor. Then he was there at the door. He was asking the, the minority leader, don't you have work to do in your ward? Why are you coming here to bother the governor? Like, he became even the gatekeeper. Then he starts insulting MCAs, even in public areas, and like weeping emotions instead of like maybe disappearing above the... He should just be at home taking care of the family business and whatever that's happening and let the governor work and then he should isolate things that are... And if he's going to, to do politics, to, 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 to meetings, he shouldn't talk about what took them to that meeting. For example, if they are going to distribute food, let him talk about food or wherever thing that he has chosen to do. Kiraito's wife was doing Taweza such that whenever she went to meetings, that she took... She, she, she's talked about whatever that brought her there. You have never heard of Kiraito's wife criticizing Kiraito's critics. For example, Ayub, the current speaker, was one of Kiraito's critics. Elias Morega, the former municipality MC, was one of Kiraito's critics. You never heard Kiraito's wife talk politics about whoever Kiraito perceived as his enemies. Unless, of course, during the campaign time, whenever everybody was attacking each other left, right and center. If Murega was to do anything, he's supposed to stick to the objectives and to whatever business they are doing wherever they are. He should leave politics to the politician, who is the wife or the deputy governor. If it's the deputy governor we are arguing with, it's okay. The governor is fine. She's a politician. But him, he should just shut up and help the wife unite and make her more powerful. He, he can even play the role of being the, the go-between, uniting. Not driving revenge further, extracting revenge, insulting. We don't care whatever he does with the wife. The other day he said we are preventing her to sleep with the wife. Come on. He can even sleep on the roadside. Nobody cares. The issue that is of importance here is him to leave the wife to govern. It's the wife who was elected. They were not the, on the ballot together. It's the wife who was elected. So for him it's about interference and trying to... And also the other day the wife, I think he's the one who pushed the wife to appear. Um, to, to appoint him as an MYS patron, a position that does, do, does not exist in the Merit Service Act. And he says, no, I have appointed him and he will not be paid. It's not about pay. Merit Service has a budget of 100 million shillings. It has staff. It has procures. So he will be like it has a thousand recruits every year. He will be influential. You can't put someone there and say, this is not being salaried. Then why the hell are you putting them there if there is nothing they are going to do? So you are trying also to appoint your, 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 your husband by end that, and creating positions that are nowhere, that are not supposed to be created in the first place. So um, the, 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 the husband should keep off. We have heard of mamas, uh, like he even listens on phones whenever she is talking and wants to know who are you talking to? Like he is not leaving the governor alone. And then picking the governor's why the phone and texting our perceived enemies. Like the other day, it's the husband, we came to find out later, who insulted Kirimangushine, the MP for Imendi Central when Kirima alleged that the governor was trying to call female MPs to reject me the Karintori. So the husband picks our phone and starts texting and insulting the perceived enemies and you know, going back and forth with them. And then when somebody says, like Kirima said in the text, like, I don't think I'm talking with the governor here. Then now that's when he comes out of the shadows. That's when you realize, oh, it was the husband. So it's very disrespectful and it's, it's everywhere. It's, it's supposed to keep up the wife's phones. The wife is a public property now. The wife is not just private property for him. She is public property as long as she is the governor of Meru County. Ukiangalia wakati wa campaign mama na Muregabaisu walifanya campaign pamoja. Na kuna mtu mwingine hata MCA sama nani alikuwa ga independent candidate. Alikuwa ga ye na buwanake Muregabaisu. So mi sionelei kama kuna makosa yote wakua na fuatana. Na kuhusu deputy ya governor hapa Meru. Anaitua nani? Okay. 
hapa mwanzo mwanzo before bwana yake mureka baichu wanzie kuandanisha sana walikuwa wanaendesha deputy governor na governor hapo ni kweli hapo walikuwa na venye ilianza venye aliingia kwa ofisi mara ya kwanza walianza kuendanisha lakini so, baada ya munda sasa nenda peke yake deputy governor aka akaanza kuachwa bwana yake akaingia hiyo ni saya duki angalia wakienda governor na mume wake ndio wanaweza saruti wadi kuliko deputy governor wanaweza pearl inspector ni ile nika nika deputy yake yani ukiangalia unaweza sema ni governor na deputy wake lakini ni mumewe sasa mureka ndio deputy bwana yake ni akae wapange wao wawili na bibi yake mimi nimekuwa mkubwa bwana wangu kwa hivyo kwa sasa wewe kaa pale lakini bado mimi ni, ni, ni bibi ya, ni bibi yako ile haki yako ya kibibi nitaku utapata lakini sasa kazi wacha nifanye ya, ya wananchi umeru imewajaa paka kwa damu sasa wanaona mwanamke hawezi tuongoza mwanamke kama kwa na maendeleo acha tuongoze mgabana ni mama gabana ni mama bwana huyu mama tu hapa mbele tumemuona kama Mariamu eh afore wewe eh huyu tumemuona kama Mariamu ndugu yangu akona akona mayai akona mayai akona mayai Mariamu akona mayai 47 kila kila ondi kona mayai yake 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 sasa tunataka kila 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 ondi isae katotoka totoka 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 ya maendeleo eh Uh, where someone also says when you keep on reminding us governor ni mama <laughs> because actually in most of our talks it's like uh, uh, governor ni mama governor ni mama so like you put it it's it's true we being led by a woman for a meru is a uh, is a gray area but then you see when she goes to a meeting and keeps on reminding the meru men that governor ni mama then it's like telling us it's like get over it my brother we are <laughs> we have taken over we are the ones who are in charge but that notwithstanding really i don't really think that one is either here or neither there because um uh, people actually accepted to be very honest i mean the merus didn't have a problem with that being a governor the only issue was will she deliver that is the question that we are asking ourselves and now uh, because of what has been happening Uh, we are wondering would, could she because maybe she's a woman or maybe because uh, uh, she has a different way of running things uh, will she really deliver so that is where actually our main uh, bone of contention is when it comes to our agenda men accepted i would I'd be very honest we all accepted she is the governor now assuming let's assume that now it is her who is impeached how about the deputy governor now becoming the governor I think the deputy governor is a bit sober if I am to give um, uh, if I am to, to look at it objectively the, when there was a swearing in at Kinori stadium when the governor was being sworn in the only person who was the voice of reason of bringing people together was the deputy governor whatever happened of him after that I don't know I think they told him to stop being reasonable maybe I don't know but he was reasonable in his speech asking people to respect the elders to respect even the former governor to bring people together now it's time for work i love this speech so i expect that that's the, the man that's the original man right now i have had colleagues complaining that he's very arrogant in the way he's treating them but i hope that's the man is maybe he was pulling the face to be so that he can cope with the drama that we have at the governor's office but now with him i expect that he's a sober man someone who is going to run the county in case the governor is impeached um, he becomes the governor and i believe he's a sober person who can run the county very well look at these two pictures makueni and embu had uh, similar challenges with the governor and the mcas there was uh, some slow pace in development uh, like ipia the last time the governor was independent but he was able to work with the mcas what's the way forward mushimio now Um that's a question I wanted to avoid. <laughs> <laughs> In Makueni, I think it was an argument about similar issues but the governor there was quite sober. He was not over insulting MCs calling them cartels and thieves and all that. In Embu, the governor was kept in office by procedure. Like uh, now, like the governor was independent but 
he was a very involved guy. Like, you can call Mraith even now and you can pick your phone calls. I was the finance chairman. I called him to put our meeting with a few members of my committee to see whether we can see what he was doing because he was written the best in terms of collecting revenue in the country. So we went there to benchmark. Someone you can get on phone as a governor. So the MCAs, you involved them in everything. Uh, I think the only way out of this is for her to do us, to, to be serious. Organize a meeting, consult with us leadership, meet at an hotel or an outside ground. You can even meet at the county commissioner's office, but not your residence. Somewhere that we feel neutral, then you can invite the arbiters. The Council of Governors have um, volunteered to arbitrate. If they are not able, you can involve the deputy president to arbitrate the matter. And then we'll be able to come to an amicable solution about all this. And now, uh, please talk to us uh, more about your program, the Kenya Airlift program. What okay. you do and uh, what's the progress? I, I know it's something that you like to do, uh, especially for the male community. Is, uh, I feel that that program is touching the youth. It's touching the, 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 the Kenya Airlift program in 2018 in partnership with Bob Mweti, a friend of mine who is the U.S. The main objective is to help young people to go and work in the U.S. It's only that we take them through school. We, we, we only take graduates and we take the best. People who did well in high school and people who did well in the undergraduate studies. Then we put them through um, a process that takes like 8 to 12 months to be able to go to the U.S. They go there, they, they study, we help them get work. Then we hope these guys will also come back to Kenya and also help us um, change our country, particularly in the technology sector because the U.S. is quite advanced when it comes to technology. And that's one of the reasons we have chosen the U.S. for them. So we started with two young people, uh, and when nobody was believing us, to, when we tell uh, young people, come, join our program and go to the U.S., they were asking us, who have you taken? Do you have any results? Who is there? And we didn't have anybody. But slowly, uh, people started believing us. Right now, we have 102 uh, young people in the U.S. already. We have official partnerships with four universities. I'm going to sign a fifth one. I'm traveling to Missouri, uh, um, Missouri State University uh, on Sunday. We are sending an agreement with them. This agreement comes with scholarship for our students, in-state uh, fees for those who come through our program. And also, um, speeded up. The, the, the university will be speeding up uh, the, um, the applications so that the, the students can be admitted quickly. Because you realize sometimes you apply, it takes three months for university to admit you. So they play the delay, then there is also the embassy. And the, the US embassy has known about the Kenya Airlift program and they, they are taking our students. So right now, um, we have uh, 1,500 students who have paid and enrolled in our program. We charge some little money, of course. Uh, we have 1,500, 102 in America, and we are expecting to take like 120 this December to get to close to uh, 230 now who will be in the U.S. So our, out, our plan is to have 10,000 young people in the U.S. in the next five years, if that's possible. We want to have like 10,000 there, sending money back to the country, making a contribution to their families. All the best. You're, you're not just uh, saying, Mr. Speaker, at the assembly, you're also helping the young people yeah. in the county. In the country, it's a national oh, project. Oh, it's a national program. Yeah. Uh, it was, of course, it was anchored from around. Eh? Yeah, it was started in my ward. Mm -hmm. uh, then we realized uh, we have a, a, a lamp here. It's like putting it, putting it under the bed uh, by putting it, just making it a village thing. So we, we opened it up for the national. country, so we made it national. Yeah, so, but we are, since the both founders, me and Bob are Merus, we are trying to get as many Merus to our people are very comfortable around here. I don't know why they are comfortable. They just want to keep pestering you to Taftia Gazi Kwata County. And there are no jobs there. So we are telling them, go to America. Unaingia kwa county hapa kuandikwa 60,000. In America, we are getting you guys jobs that are paying 800,000 shillings and above per month. Why would you want to stay here? All right. Thank you, Mashimiwa. Uh, we ended there. We have ended this interview so many times. But yeah. I hope that uh, there will be a resolution and the county will function for the betterment of the lives of the people of Mayo. Yes, yes. And all the best. Thank you. We appreciate for your time. Sant. Thank you. Mimi nasema Mayo wakubali kuongozwa na mama Honorable Bishop Kawila Mwangaza na serikali iko imara na sisi tunaunga serikali mkono ndio tufike mahali tunaenda na Mayo ni kanan sisi hatuna mambo yote ile na mambo iko sawa. Wote imese God bless Meru County, God bless Kenya. Hayo ndio maoni ya baadhi ya wakazi wa kaunti ya Meru yakiwemo ya baadhi ya viongozi wao. Sasa 
ikiwa mgogoro ulioko kati ya gavana na viongozi waliochaguliwa kama vile MCAs utaisha we can only leave that to the womb of time jina langu ni Kingori Wangeshi na nimeenda